Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode. My name is Dr. Paul. In today's video, I am going to give you a step-by-step -step strategy to make sure that you absolutely crush your USMLE Step 2 CK exam. With Step 1 going pass-fail very soon, or maybe it already has by the time you watch this, doing well on your CK is not even an option. You absolutely have to crush it. And because it is known as a bit of an easier exam because it's clinical based, you know, you're doing all this hands-on stuff, you absolutely need to score to your full potential so that when you apply for residency, you have everything in place that will put you in the best position possible to get a lot of interviews so that you can match somewhere that you'll be excited about. So if you want to learn how to absolutely dominate and crush your step two CK exam, stick around. This one is for you. Before we dive in, do me a huge favor if you're enjoying the videos, hit that like button below. While you're at it, subscribe, set up notifications, and we will let you know every time we release a brand new video. All right, so we all know that in January of 2022, the USMLE step one is going pass fail. What does that mean? It means at this point, we only have one objective way to measure us versus all the other students, which is going to be the step two CK exam. What does that mean? It means you absolutely positively must kill this exam. Now, I'm not trying to put a lot of pressure on you, but knowing this will allow you to at least start preparing early. So the days of going through rotations and then going home, hanging out with your friends or relaxing are done. You need to now strategize so that you're getting ready for the CK as you go through rotations. So that when the time comes to really dedicate your time yourself full-time for CK prep, you're not just starting from scratch, you're basically just reviewing because all along you've been putting in the work to build the foundation so that you can absolutely dominate this exam. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna give you um, a handful of tips and strategies that you can implement now, whether you're in rotations or you're going to be starting in the future, but you can start to implement this at the beginning of your rotations so that as you move forward, you can set yourself up for success. So the first thing you absolutely positively must do if you want to succeed on the CK is from as early as possible after you finish your step one and you're about to do your rotations is to plan review into your day. What do I mean by this? I mean that just like you have a, let's say a nine to five rotation, let's say you're doing internal medicine and you have to be there from nine to five, you should also have a dedicated period of time every single day where you are going through CK material. Now, the way you should do this is to focus on the specific rotation that you're doing now. So if you're in internal, don't worry about PEDS or OB-GYN or surgery, worry about internal and absolutely crushing your your, your foundational knowledge about internal medicine. So if you are in a internal medicine rotation, then chances are that you are going to have to take a shelf exam. So what I want you to start doing is, is, is thinking about rotations differently. Instead of just thinking about rotations in a way of, of hey, it's a rotation, something I have to do, think of it as a class and the final test is that shelf exam. So if you're an internal, as you're learning, you have to be thinking, I'm preparing for my shelf. And chances are you probably are. But this is a good thing. This is not a bad thing. Back when I did rotations, we didn't have shelf exams. We kind of just had to hope, hope that we studied enough to do well on CK. But now you sort of have these, thing, these, these goals you have to meet along the way. And I think that's a good thing. So the first thing was plan your days to review. The second thing that I mentioned here was treat each rotation like it's going to be a practice CK test. So there are a variety of ways we can do this. And the, the most important thing you can do, A, is like I said, do some review every day. But another thing you can do is use question banks like UWorld or AMBOSS and take advantage of the subject specific NBME exams because those are going to essentially be what your shelf exams are. So as you're going through and you're studying, let's say we're doing, let's use a 12 week internal medicine rotation as an example. So let's say you are doing internal medicine and you go home every day and you do a block of internal medicine questions in your world. And then after that block, you take notes, you then review them. And then the next day you do the same thing. You also implement a review of your, your, your past information. After about six to eight weeks, you should be done with the subject specific questions in your world. 
At this point, what you want to do is say, hey, where am I at? Take a subject specific NBME, see where you're at, see where your weaknesses lie. Maybe it's GI, maybe it's renal, whatever it may be, and then focus on improving those weaknesses. It's kind of just like the big um, exam when we use an NBME to identify weaknesses and fix them. You just want to do this on a, on a smaller scale essentially, but it's really important that you are following this protocol so that as you go through, you identify weaknesses and fix them. What this will do is position you for a good grade on your shelf exam, but probably more importantly is it's going to build the foundation in each specific topic or each specific rotation so that as you move forward, you've got this knowledge base for internal and then for surgery and then for peds and OB-GYN so that then when you go and you actually prep for your CK, like I said, you don't want to be starting from scratch. You're basically starting from a point where, hey, I've done this all. Now I just got to do a quick review so that I can make sure that I'm up to speed with everything. Nothing's, um, you know, nothing goes stale. Everything's fresh. And then you just move forward like that. So you want to do that with every single rotation. Now, the next thing you want to make sure you do, and, and I touched on this, is as you move forward, so let's say we had week one of internal. That means we've got uh, five, let's say five to six blocks of questions that we took notes on. You always want to make sure you're implementing a review every single day of stuff you've already touched on. So what do I mean by this? Let's say week one, we decided, hey, we're going to do cardio, cardio internal. So in week two, let's say you're going to do renal. So instead of just moving forward with renal, you have to make sure that you implement a time every single day, maybe it's 30 minutes, 45, whatever. I recommend at least an hour, maybe first thing in the morning to dedicating to going through all the material that you've already touched on. Why is this so important? Because the biggest mistake students make is, and just as a side note, this is why students work so hard and see very little progress. It's because you're always doing more and you're learning more, but if you're not reviewing the old stuff, what happens is you learn it, you feel comfortable, you go on to the next thing. Every single day, your knowledge, if it was up here, as you learn more, you learn more and more and more, the knowledge from that last topic just goes down and down. And then the next topic, down and down. By the time you're at the last topic, you're like, hey, I've gotten through everything. Let me take an NBME, see where I'm at. And you don't do well. It's because the topics you just finished are fresh. The topics you did previously, they're stale. And you can't allow that to happen because then you're just in this position where A, you feel just devastated because you work so hard, but you don't see the results. But B, you don't have the foundation anymore because you kind of let it slip. You can't do that. So what I recommend is as you create new stuff, meaning as you're progressing every day, take some time, maybe an hour in the morning to go through all of the information you've already touched on. Now, as you have more and more, obviously you're not gonna be able to go through everything, but let's say you have a book of, of let's say this is internal medicine. I'm gonna wake up in the morning and I'm gonna say, let me go through internal. Let me go through as much as I can. And let's say I get through this far. Okay, tomorrow I'll start on this page. And then I'll do this, 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 this. And then the next day I'll start here. Basically, all you need to do is make sure that you're constantly cycling through the information so that it is consistently staying fresh. And the more you do that, the more you'll move that information into your long-term memory. So as time goes, hey, I'm not gonna have to do internal that much. Maybe I review my, my notes once a week just to make sure it's fresh. But the more you've seen it, the less you actually have to do. But you have to start this from the very beginning. If you don't, then you're basically always just gonna be relearning information. That's a super inefficient way to do things. And it's just not going to get you that foundation you need to crush your CK exam because remember, a lot of students, students who watch videos like this or our students who are doing things correctly are going to do very well. And so you have to make sure you're one of those students because if you don't do well, you're simply gonna be pushed down the list of, of, of um, being invited to an interview. And ultimately, that's the last thing you want. So this will allow you to continue to build your foundation and reinforce it, strengthen it as you move forward. You have to work this into your, your days every single day. My recommendation for CK, wake up early in the morning. Like I said, you can go to the hospital first thing, do an hour of review of the old stuff. Then in the evening, you can do some new stuff. But you have to make sure you're doing this every day. Otherwise, you just won't get the benefits of all your hard work. And now, when it comes time to actually dive into your dedicated CK prep, one of the toughest challenges students in, encounter is trying to study hardcore, like leading up to their exam when they have a really intense rotation. So, you know, you, I know that you don't have complete control over your rotations, but I know you do have control over it to an extent. What I would recommend you do is if you can set up an easier, lighter rotation, let's say after you finish your cores. So you might say finish your cores in, in 12 months, then maybe you set up something like 
uh, a G rotation, you can ask around what are some easier rotations that are less demanding. And I'm not trying to say take the easy way out here by no means, but I am saying if you can give yourself four weeks where maybe you only have to go to the hospital for a couple hours a day, that'll give you a lot more time to dedicate to your CK exam. Because at the end of the day, you know, whether you get eight hours a day of GU versus eight hours a day of CK, what's going to be most valuable to you? CK, because that's going to help you score well. That is what's going to get you more interviews because a higher score means more interviews. So finding a rotation that is a little more lax will give you the opportunity, A, to continue getting credit for a rotation and, you know, do something you're interested in, but ask around. I mean, I did that. Um, I asked students who I were in my rotations if they knew of any rotations that were uh, internal medicine based um, that were a little lighter. And then I said, how about surgery? And then GU ended up being a rotation where I think I went in twice a week for from one to three. It was a, it was a physician who was a little bit older and so he was near the end of his career. So he just went in to see patients. But in that time, I mean, we would see a ton of patients. And so I still got the value out of it. But I also got to focus on the most important thing for me at that time, which is being able to prepare for the CK exam. And ultimately that ended up yielding the rewards that I was hoping for. So try and keep that in mind as you're as you're creating your schedule for the future. You're going to want to have something a little less rigorous so that you can put that effort into your CK prep um, and, and maximize your chances of a great score. And the last thing that I want to share with you is and this is if you know me at all or you know you follow us at all. NBMEs, they're just an invaluable resource that you absolutely cannot um, even start your step one or your step two CK prep without thinking of when you're going to implement these. So it's important that you use the NBMEs for the CK exam. You can also use the assessments that UWorld offers, that AMBOSS offers. Any, any assessment that is offered through one of the question banks, you can use those and you might want to use those first. And the reason why is because they're not as accurate as MBMEs, but they can still tell you, hey, you scored very well here, you were average here and you were weak here. And that'll at least give you some direction when you sit down and do your dedicated prep. Now, I know there's not as many MBMEs for CK as there is for step one, at least right now there's not, it might change in the future. So what that means is you have to be very cautious about how you use them. The good thing is you're gonna get ready for CK relatively quickly. So let's say you finished your course, take an assessment, like a UWorld assessment, see where you're weak, Work on those weaknesses really, really aggressively for seven to 10 days and then take an NBME, see where you're at. Now, this is assuming you're going to take about four weeks of dedicated prep. So maybe after 10 days, take an NBME, then see if there's any weaknesses left. If there are, work aggressively on those. Obviously, work on everything, but spend more time on your weaknesses. And then once you've gotten through the weaknesses, <clears throat> then you can take another NBME. At this point, you should almost be where you want to be. You might have a couple things you need to sort of tinker with and, and, and work on, deep dive just to improve something that's really lagging. And then that last NBME you can take right before your exam. This should be one where you've eliminated all your weaknesses. You're going to do well. It gives you a pretty good idea of where you're at approximately. And um, that would be the ideal situation. So let me just repeat that again. Use a UWorld or AMBOSS assessment. Once you finish your course and you've studied a little bit, and you've, you've done all your shelves, so you've put a lot of work already into it, use a question bank assessment just to identify your initial weaknesses, work on those for seven to 10 days, take an NBME, see where you're at, where your weaknesses are. Based on the results of that NBME, take an, uh, work hard for a few days to work on those weaknesses that that NBME tells you. This should be the last time that you have any weaknesses. That third NBME you take should tell you exactly where you are likely to score and there should be no weaknesses if you did things right. Now, if you are struggling and you've been doing your shelves and you're studying for CK and you are not seeing any type of improvement, we might need to adjust your schedule a little bit. So there's a video that I shot recently, which is um, a morning and evening routine to, to improve your weaknesses and, and constantly review. And this is a review routine. So reviewing all the things you've already done and it sort of breaks it into strengths and weaknesses. And if you are struggling, then check that video out. I'll put a link up here. Uh, a picture of it and I'll also put it at the end of this video. Check that out though. That's a very valuable video as far as what to do to improve weaknesses when you simply are not improving them. Um, so I have a video to address weaknesses and then a video to address weaknesses based on this review strategy. Um, and I'll put those at the end of this so you can check those out. They're super valuable. Even if you haven't started yet, learning what to do if you have weaknesses or what to do to review the right way from the start will be one of the best investments you can you can 
put in yourself. And these are free videos, so check those out at the end and uh, make sure you implement this stuff, all right? And that is it. So let me review one more time. Number one, plan your days to review. It's important that you, you discipline yourself to review. Treat, number two, treat each rotation like a practice test. Work hard for that shelf exam because the harder you work for that shelf, the easier time you're gonna have when it comes time to dedicating your time specifically to CK prep. Um, number three is use subject specific NBMEs, of course. Uh, number four, implement daily review to ensure that you keep things fresh. Remember, the review is where the score improves. If you don't review, but you only move forward, you're not going to make improvements. Nothing worse, and I hate seeing it, but I get DMs all the time. Hey, I've been working so hard and my scores are not improving. First question I say is, what's your review schedule like? They say, I don't really have one. We need to eliminate that problem before it becomes one. The fifth thing is you wanna to try to line up a slower rotation with your dedicated CK prep. Obviously, I explained why it makes sense, try to do it. And the last thing is use NBMEs to ensure that you identify weaknesses, fix them, and eliminate them. If you follow all of this, you will set yourself up for a killer step two CK score, which as you know, is going to be more important than ever. All right, that is it for today. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section below. I answer every single question that you guys pose and um, I look forward to seeing what you have to ask. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button below, subscribe, set up notifications, and I will let you know every time I release a brand new video. I appreciate you sticking around until the end. I hope it was helpful. We'll see you on the next episode.